Hi, this is Glenda and today I will be making a small soap in this mold. It's a silicone 8 inch mold. I have my oils already melted and the light water is also in this container. I prepared it ahead so right now the light water is at room temperature and I'm going to verify the temperature. Right now the oils are at 116 Fahrenheit and the light water it's at 80 which is a bad room temperature here in Texas on the second story, even though the AC is on. So I'm going to add slowly the light water to the oils. And right before blending, I'll show you a picture of the design inspiration. It's just the peacock embed, and I later changed the body of the soap to this, so hopefully I can achieve that. So now it's time to blend. I'll put some music for you. Alright, it looks like I have a shift trace at this point, so I'm going to add the fragrance. And the fragrance that I chose for this design is Cardamom True Sugar from Wholesale Supplies. This is a 2 ounce bottle and I'm using all of it, and actually that's not quite enough for this amount of soap that I'm making. So I'm also using a um, sample bottle that I got from Bam Brambleberry with red tea, I believe it's called, or red spice tea. And so this is about half an ounce. And then to make up for my fragrance percentage, I'm also using a fragrance that I think will complement it. This is Indian Sandalwood from Lone Star Candle Supply. And this one is skin safe or soap safe. And I'm about to use about uh, maybe half an ounce of this one. Now I didn't weigh this one ahead, so I'm going to do that now. And actually, now that I think of it, I meant to mix the fragrance ahead of time with French green clay. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go get it. Um, I saw this soap maker who was um, mixing clays with her essential oils to make them last longer. So it's pretty much the same principle. Um, ideally, I should have maybe mixed the fragrances, all of them, with the clay ahead of time, but hopefully it works like this too and I figure French green clay will go with the color palette for this soap so I'm going to add a little bit I bought this one from um, the stash group so it came in this uh, Ziploc bag <clears throat> it was somebody who had bought a, a lot of it like wholesale box so I'm gonna put about two teaspoons hopefully that's enough and I am um, mixing it with the Indian sandalwood and I'm also going to use the mini blender for them. So hopefully it does make it stay longer. The reviews for this fragrance said that it tended to fade in cold process soap. So I'm trying to avoid that because it is a lovely fragrance. If you like cardamom, I like cardamom, so I happen to like it. And it's really hard to find a supplier that carries cardamom fragrance oil. So I was happy when I found this one and hopefully it will last a little bit at least in the soap. So now I'm going to blend it. So it looks like it's incorporated now. I'm just stirring it and it has taken some of that color from the French green clay which will work out good because all of the colors that I'm going to put 
in this will have a tinge of green in them by default and so I'm going to split it now it's gonna be basically three main colors most of it is gonna be green uh, some of it is going to be blue and a portion of it is going to be like a turquoise or light teal color um, I think this one is going to be the teal I'm not sure it's gonna be about the same anyway so I usually like to mix my fragrance no my colorants ahead of time disperse them in oils I feel I have a better distribution when I do that however this time I did not prepare ahead so I'm just gonna add it directly to the soap butter I'm using clean blue mica from nurture soap I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. It's K L E I N. It might be Klein. Who knows? And I'm using about a teaspoon of it. Let's see which one to put it. Oh, I'll put it on this one because I don't want too much of the blue, actually. And this is the teal color. I forget the actual name because it came in a bag and then I transferred it over to this jar that I had. Um, and so I don't remember at this point the name Now the green one is the lime green mojito mica and I bought that one from wholesale supplies it is a crafter's choice mica it's a light colored I've used it before so I'm gonna use a little extra I'm using one teaspoon and a half around because last time I tried to use it it was very pale so I want to make sure that I do have extra colors so I even have on hand uh, some blue pigment in case I need to make it darker. All right, I got all my colors blended and I noticed that this fragrance is very soft. Like if you put the bottle to your nose, you can smell it and it smells nice. But it hasn't filled the room. Usually when I'm making soap, the fragrance tends to fill the atmosphere and you can smell it. It's very they're usually very fragrant, of course the fragrances. Um, but this one, it's not doing that, so hopefully uh, I will be able to smell some of it in the soap. I'm becoming a little concerned. So what I did is that those little drops that are at the end of the jar, um, I'm using even those tiny drops. And I'm just hand stirring them because it's just a few drops. No need to involve the hand blender for this one. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, I can smell it because it would be a pity if I didn't and if not maybe the red tea fragrance and the sandalwood can provide some scent on the soap so I'm going to do first a layer of green which is the color I have the most of and actually now that I realize that um, I need to actually try to get rid of some bubbles so I'm going to give you some moments of silence while I do that all right that should be enough um, and I incorporated those bubbles when I was blending the colors since it was a small amount of soap on each container I noticed that um, I was they were forming when I was blending it so now I'm gonna do just simultaneous layers of the different colors they're not specific um, on thickness or anything they're just you know a quick layering of colors uh, now doing this peacock theme soap reminds me a lot of my wedding primarily because the embeds are the same ones the mold I should say is the same mold that I used to make 
these peacock magnets which were our wedding party favors and it also reminds me of something and I don't know if this has happened to you or not if you're married or if you have ever had a party where you had a theme so we use peacocks and its colors as the theme for our wedding and I've noticed that ever since the majority of the presents that I received from family or friends not all of them but but several presents are peacock related and I don't mind this I actually you know I'm thankful for anybody who gives me presents or gifts I appreciate them a lot but I, I feel like telling them you know I do like other birds I like hummingbirds I like owls um, I mean there's so many beautiful birds out there so it seems that if you choose something as a theme for whether it's your wedding or a special event people will tend to associate that with something that you like but maybe maybe it's not everybody maybe it's just my family and my friends who are like that I don't know you tell me and another thing that it's funny about not funny but curious about peacocks is that initially I didn't know how high they can fly and I was watching this video where I think it's in YouTube it should be in YouTube where somebody in India calls peacocks you know he does a sound or something and from a hill you can see a group of them flying and then they land close to the guy and he starts throwing food for them you know grains or something and they start eating them and one time I was on my way to work and we were I was in a van pool which is similar to a car pool and all of a sudden I was in the front the driver and I we had to stop at the gate of the building and we see something in the sky like what is it and it lands and it's a male peacock that apparently well the only thing we can think of is that there was a restaurant he told me that closed down and it's in Houston and they um, had peacocks as a decoration in their garden which I, I think is messed up I mean if you're gonna have an animal it shouldn't just be as decoration but anyway so the restaurant closed down and they left all the animals inside in the garden so it seems that the peacocks were flying out seeking food and they just had to fend for themselves which was sad um, and just the other day a few weeks ago I actually was driving in close to that area and just on the side of the road I saw a pair of peacocks a female and a male one and I was just I couldn't believe it because it's the city and it's not something you expect to see so I actually took pictures of them until somebody came behind me and I had to move now I'm not sure if I should use this color as the taupe or if I should uh, put another one on top I'm trying to make it a smooth but it doesn't seem to be smooth it, it looks like it needs to be feel more this mold so that I'm able to smooth it out easier so I do have some extra green and I'll probably just use this uh, leftover to fill the rest right now this green is not looking very pretty it's looking a little pukey but hopefully after saponification it takes on a better shade or tone and not this bright uh, I just don't like this green but greens tend to do this though greens tend to look bad when you're making when you're working with them and then once the soap dries they turn a pretty color so it's time to do the 
swirl that I plan to do but this swirling tool that I have is too long this actually is not flexible because it's I made it with polymer clay and I made it for a bigger container a bigger mold so I'm gonna try to use it vertically but actually I don't think that's going to work so maybe if I use this smaller one I may have more control over it so I'm putting it down on one side and I'm moving it but the soap is actually setting and it's um, I'm having a hard time moving it across so I'm going to try something else so give me one second all right I found this wire and I believe this will work because I'm able to bend it uh, fairly easily into the shape and length that I need for this mold so I just do need to make some minor adjustments there we go this wire is actually the handle of this bucket which I removed so I was able to be able to put the bucket inside the microwave because I put my oils there so it's gonna come handy I'm going down and then I moved it about an inch and then I brought it back up and then I'm going to do the same just coming from this one side and moving it towards the middle and then pulling it up and then lastly I think I'm able to do this once more and I'm just dragging it at the bottom and then pulling it up and that's all I'm going to do hopefully with this I'm able to achieve the um, pattern you know like the scallop edges that I have in mind we'll see it'll be a surprise and if it doesn't come out it won't be that bad anyway okay so now it be it will be time to uh, smooth the top up and just do some cleanup on the edges to make it easier to unmold Well, good morning. It's been about 18 hours since I made the soap and I unmolded it. I do have some spots like air pockets on the edges, but nothing too bad. So I'm going to probably use this knife to cut it and see what it looks like inside. Da, da, da. Oh. <coughs> interesting so this is the whisks where I lift it up I think I should have used um, maybe like um, what do you call it a thicker swirling tool or I could have used the same one but put a straw on it to make it thicker so that the it would have been more pronounced the curved but it's not bad it's definitely better than what I was going for and I'm curious to see how brand it will turn with the percentage of bunny light it has it has about a I think only 1% vanilla so hopefully the coloring that I have applied is enough to make up for that discoloration that it will not be noticeable but anyway this is what it looks like and I wanted to show you it looks like the pattern is uniform throughout and next time I attempt this I will definitely okay here we go 
when you cut it with a knife you don't want to go like this you want to rotate into it so that to the smearing is not too bad so here you go thank you for watching and if you haven't subscribed go ahead and do that to get notifications of my next video have a good day bye